I've just finished reading a, an amazing book, an author, Bernie Krause, called The Great Animal Orchestra. And Bernie has spent his whole life since the 60s traveling all over the world recording what he calls biophonies, symphonies of animals in different locations. He's been to every continent, and he's done something uh, remarkable in some of these, with some of these recordings he's made, which he has many thousands of hours of these recordings at this point. He's also made spectrographs of these recordings so that you can see a kind of visual image of the sound in these places. And what you learn from that is the absolute genius of the natural landscape in, in, the, in the animals in, in, a, in a natural environment, being able to create sounds without stepping on the acoustic turf of the animals around them. They do this in two ways. They do it by singing in a distinct register, low, middle, high, all the way from the bats way up there to the elephants way down there. And they also do it with rhythm by interspersing their calls in the silences of the other animals around them. It's incredibly important for each of the animals to have their call be distinct. This is really the purpose of their singing, is to send messages to other members of their species for protection, for mating, for information about food, etc. cetera. Um, He's also done the thing of going back to these places years later after the kind of creeping uh, advent of civilization in some of these and has been able to document the distinct loss of you know, sonic integrity and uh, absolutely hearing fewer voices in these places over time. But be that as, may, as it may, this, um, the idea behind this program and really everything I'm doing is, is really about how to fall more deeply in love with our environment and with nature. Fall deeply in love with what we have left of it. As we know, you know, the kind of protective urge that we feel for our children or that we see in animals protecting their children is something that we can cultivate as a way to reach out to our communities and discover ways that we can protect the integrity of our own habitats. So just imagining 200,000 years ago when kind of early modern humans were first listening to this incredible symphony of wild sound, you know, in wild Africa. And as we camped and fished and hunted we began to imitate the movements, the sounds, the voices, the rhythms, and the interactions of all these animals that we shared the forests and the grasslands with. And animals have an amazing way of sharing this sonic environment, as I just mentioned. And that has become the basis for us musicians of rhythm, of composition, of orchestration. Everything we learn from, from nature is, we've learned all those things from nature. And uh, the way that uh, creatures can coexist in great diversity in places inspired our harmony, our counterpoint, and uh, polyrhythm. So these are languages that we developed in direct response to what we heard. The languages of music, of dance, of rituals. And it's a music that's, it's a language that speaks in a way with more eloquence than words can and can describe even, I think, more vividly the interaction between humans and animals. Well, this piece is, uh, is an ode to all that. It's an original piece of mine. I just call it My Africa.
Thank you. 